Have you ever gone outside and said, wow, it's a nice day? Or have you ever gone outside and realized it was far too cold to be out there without a jacket? These feelings are all expressible by temperature. No matter if you measure in Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin, temperature makes it possible for us to communicate the feeling of the air around us. The first known recorded temperature was found in Florence, Italy. The recording was taken during the medieval era while the earth was rapidly cooling. This is known as the Little Ice Age. But temperature is not only useful for describing the air around us, but we use it every day to describe the materials in us. If you measure your body's temperature while you're healthy, your body should be 97 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. If your body is a few degrees above that, you probably have a fever. But if you are over 105 degrees Fahrenheit, then you might have a heat stroke. A heat stroke can cause massive internal damage to our body, and it usually occurs when you are overexerting yourself, for example, running a marathon. Knowing this, you might wonder why, if the temperature inside the human body is 98 degrees Fahrenheit, why do we not feel hot all the time? If it's 98 degrees outside, we shouldn't feel hot because we're always 98 degrees. But that's not true. The reason why you feel hot is a kind of difficult question to answer. But to answer it, imagine yourself as an engine, always generating heat. The most common way our body dissipates the heat is by sweating. When you sweat, the water on your body absorbs the heat and evaporates away, leaving you cooler. But when it is very hot outside, it is harder for your body to get rid of the heat since your sweat also absorbs heat from the air. If it's humid, it also gets hard for your body to evaporate the sweat because of all the moisture in the air. All of this contributes to your feeling of heat. The prime temperature for sweating is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That is why it feels so nice when the air outside is at that temperature. If it gets any colder than that, your body's heat is absorbed into the air around you and you feel cold. If that happens, you put on a jacket and it insulates you from the cold. Moving on to a very important temperature, 100 degrees Celsius. At exactly that temperature, liquid water turns into steam. Steam is used to power motors and generate clean electricity. One of the most energy efficient ways to generate steam is the earth itself. This is called geothermal energy. If you dig deep enough into the ground, you will eventually get to a point where the ground is at 100 degrees Celsius. Using that heat, we could turn water into steam without making the heat ourselves. Geothermal energy is one of the best options for clean energy we currently know about. Speaking of energy, supernovas are the biggest producers of energy in the universe. A supernova forms when a star dies and all of the outer gas of the star collapses in on the core and it explodes. The heat can sometimes reach up to 100 billion Kelvin, that is equal to a thousand times the heat of our sun. On the polar opposite of this massive heat is empty space. Its temperature can go all the way down to 3 Kelvin. That is impressive. But scientists are still looking to get colder. NASA will hopefully have made a piece of space that is 100 pico Kelvin before 2020. That is 1 ten billionth of a Kelvin above absolute zero, which is the lowest temperature allowed by the laws of physics. Although we know what the coldest temperature possible is, we do not know what the hottest temperature possible is. Maybe someday we will find something in the universe with the highest temperature, but you could always add more energy. So stay warm and have a good day.